we are here with Marco talking about scaling Bitcoin. So, um, obviously there is uh, an issue with Bitcoin because uh, there is an element of trust, there is an element of security, and there is an issue of scalability just because, you know, you, you can't, it's difficult to compromise between decentralization, between security and, you know, scalability as well. But you have actually developed a protocol that is trying or is actually fixing this issue. And uh, in a way, I think uh, is uh, fixing what was uh, some of the issues that Lightning Network tried to do, but wasn't really able to do it. So I think it would be interesting to kind of see, um, tell me what are the problems that Lightning Network was not able to solve when scaling Bitcoin? Sure, very good question. I think Lightning, in a, in a guess, um, has been like, oversold as the Visa MasterCard of Bitcoin, but is more like the Swift of Bitcoin, which means you are a custodian, you are a centralized entity, then you can settle in a non-custodial way between these two entities, which is definitely very useful, but at the same time, the user, the end user, are still trapped using custodial solution to be fast and to be cheap. Um, so R really try to combine and to solve this last mile for the user. So it uses a technology called shared UTXO. So we try to share as much as possible user in a single Bitcoin address. So a single Bitcoin address potentially can have 100 or 10,000 of user. And this will make super efficient for the blockchain uh, to work. And it looks like a normal Bitcoin wallet, just a keeper. You send, you receive just with an address, without a node, without a channel. So that simplify a lot for the end user. It looks like a blockchain, but actually you are not using the blockchain. How do you deal with trust? Yes, I think the important part is to consider that anyone that has a virtual, what we call virtual um, shared output, um, can always exit anytime without asking permission to anybody there is no friend of a friend you need to ask permission if for any reason uh, what we call art server that they help the protocol to batch this transaction if this art server goes offline you just can exit by yourself without asking permission so that's what we call unilateral exit right so we can exit without asking permission to anybody so you own your own assets you don't need to trust you know any party when you are transacting and, and sending bitcoin or receiving bitcoin right. and this is something innovative that um, other protocols or other actually other projects they are not actually doing i mean there are a lot of uh, bitcoin layer two they are you know kind of are popping up because yes, now absolutely. you buy your bitcoin is quite hot right yes uh, but there is a fundamental issue which is this uh, trust problem that not many are, are able to solve. So how you have been able to do that? So tell us a little bit about, you know, ARC and your team and what, um, yeah, how you manage to kind of actually solve this issue, even from, you know, a technical level. Is that yep. difficult? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we came, our team, we came from um, three, four years of uh, hands-on experience in Bitcoin Script and Bitcoin Covenants, which is a limited programming language that Bitcoin uh, allows. So instead of saying, hey, we have a different blockchain, maybe an Ethereum-based blockchain, and then we want to bridge our Bitcoin there. And right, right now, as my knowledge, there is no real trustless solution to do this. What you do is basically not create a different blockchain, but you are still creating a tree of virtual transaction. So that address basically create a virtual transaction and maybe there are 10,000 of these virtual transactions that we decide to not broadcast to Bitcoin because it's expensive, it's yeah. low. But the thing is that this operator is incentivized to not misbehave, so to help you to coordinate in the creation of this creation and storage of this virtual transaction. And for any reason, the operator goes offline or try to double spend or try to take these Bitcoin that are actually in this shared output in the, in the Bitcoin blockchain, anyone can see that and basically broadcast this virtual trigger transaction, basically having their own Bitcoin app, the real Bitcoin address, the part of, of the Bitcoin that belongs to you. So basically everyone will receive his own share of the Bitcoin if this event happens, not this unilateral exit has to happen. Of course, the protocol try to incentivize the operator to to be, you know, to be compliant because that will basically means no business anymore. Yeah. And there is no advantage for the operator because he cannot steal money. He cannot uh, forfeit money. He, he can only collect fees because he's helping, you know, this uh, shared output, this shared address to be created every every block. So every block there is a new shared address. Those are fixed for the for the for the app server. So it's a it's a good value proposition. And as every uh, every time decentralization is not uh, black and white, 
right? So it's a series of incentives between itself uh, as an incentive to not double spend because the 51% will be problematic and this is an economic, uh, you know, an economic solution to a technical problem. And I think our, as the same philosophy of the base layer of Bitcoin, so we use it, so we use uh, the Bitcoin technology, we use the Bitcoin script, so we are not moving away to another blockchain. We are still using the Bitcoin blockchain, we just decided to have a virtual studio chain, right? So yeah. it's a, basically a virtual chain uh, that we can see, but actually it's just uh, between the clients and the server. So um, let's go a little bit outside the Bitcoin space because there are different parties that are actually, you know, using Bitcoin, there are financial institutions, there are, you know, investors, they are parties, they are more like in the financial world and maybe they would like to use something like that to kind of make transactions more scalable faster. So is your uh, pseudo chain um, protocol able to tap or be used by those parties so you kind of raise above the bitcoin space and you can kind of connect with the trad five yes. world yes i i think you know uh, many institutions are seeing a bitcoin uh, and they're seeing a bitcoin to you know a strategy for their portfolio so they're trying to allocate a little bit of that but if you speak to the normal you know person in the capital markets they want to yield right yeah. so that's what they say oh we have capitals we have assets i want to make a work we want to put at work and in bitcoin space this is a very bad word especially the bitcoin core community like it's a very bad word yield looks like mm, trust looks yeah. like i'm i'm giving money to someone else and we saw ftx we saw all this problem the problem of giving money in our bitcoin to a custodian and um, so i think arc is interesting because you are like uh combining the necessity of fast and cheap transaction on one side and people potentially you know if the fee will be one dot one thousand dollar uh in maybe in, uh, in the next future many few people will be able to use the Bitcoin blockchain so you combine this necessity of cheap transaction and the necessity of liquidity provider to say hey i have my bitcoin it's me that is providing liquidity yeah. to this pseudo chain and they actually are the one uh getting a fee part of the fee so you're really creating my opinion and that's why i'm very bullish on art um, potentially we are creating a Bitcoin native interest rate, which doesn't exist. Nobody is borrowing Bitcoin for Bitcoin. We are using Bitcoin as a collateral, maybe not to borrow stablecoin, but not the opposite. And this way you can say, oh, wow, there is an interest rate on Bitcoin. If I am a large order, a micro strategy of the world, why they want to keep their Bitcoin potentially in Coinbase custody, which is a trust relationship, yeah. they can just operate this art server and collect a yield. So let me ask you a question. Bitcoin has been uh, um, perceived or considered a store of value yes. so far, right? So like digital gold. But with all the experimentation happening now in the space, we are actually seeing that potentially, you know, more like a DeFi ecosystem can actually be built on Bitcoin and Bitcoin could become, could actually expand and evolve in a different uh, type of assets. Where do you think we are at? with this Bitcoin experimentation and evolution. Yeah, I think, I think Bitcoin has the unique advantage. The biggest mode of Bitcoin is like is sound and nobody will be, ever be able to copy Bitcoin. Like that is the immaculate conception. I would say Bitcoin is there. There is no foundation. There is no incentive. There is no people involved uh, in the blockchain. And this is basically what will last centuries. So I'm sure Bitcoin will be there. So I'm really bullish on a really finance on top of Bitcoin. Right now, if you see what you can do is custodian can do something, landing, but it's custodian. I think primitive like R can really allow people to, okay, maybe you can do swaps, maybe you can do future, maybe you can do option. You can do much more primitive on a Bitcoin standard, on a Bitcoin blockchain without using other, other places and putting trust in another in new custodian. Because removing trust from, you know, from a big banks, but you go to some foundation or some, you know, young kids, that's it's not, that's not something I think, you know, the future of finance will look. And Bitcoin has all the authority to pull that. It's just a technology problem to allow new primitives and new financial uh, infrastructure. Marco, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.